Okay. So this is a patient with no prior imaging, <clears throat> at least not by us, that comes in with diagnosis with indication of quote unquote liver mass. And uh, what you can see, right, that the patient you know, clearly has cirrhosis, right? Um, the morphologically, there's ascites, and then there are several things in the liver. First, we see this very odd looking kind of mass um, on the right that clearly broke through the capsule. It does have this peripheral rim hyper enhancement. So that makes it, you know, the categorization fairly easy. So that was, you know, reported as LRM, right? And then um, you can see here, the lesion has a little bit of calcifications in it. And then the, the, there are two more lesions. Uh, you can see here, right? It has um, non-rim aphy, it has washout, it has a capsule. It's over two centimeter patient has cirrhosis. So really has classic features of uh, HCC, Lyrets 5. And here's a second one, more superior. You can see um, has uh, non-rim aphy, has washout also meets criteria for Lyrets 5. Um, we'll look at the chest. You can see that there are just big masses um, in, 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 her, in her lungs. You can see that the mass here is kind of, looks like it, it communicates with bronchus or is super infected. So this mass right in the right lower little look kind of similar to this, this thing. So we thought maybe this, this is the MET. Um, from whatever this thing ends up being. And another cute finding was, show me one second. Yeah, you can see that the patient has a translator hernia with a little drop mat right there. So, and you can see the way that the tumor looks uh, uh, on coronal, right? It looks very odd. You can see that it kind of, broke through the capsule and just kind of, it's unclear like where the tumor ends, it's unclear whether, you know, it was very hard to figure out like where the tumor ends, where ascites begins and things like that. So, you know, because this is, you know, reported as LRM, categorized as LRM, this was biopsied and the path came back as uh, sarcoma with, like features of rhabdomyosarcoma. She's an older person, patient, so she, you know, she's not a kid. Um, so the kind of interesting situation here is what to do with the, uh, with the additional two lesions. You can see that they're distinctly different, you know, from the prior, from this. So this was biopsy, the, you know, the big one. So that, that's sarcoma, probably rhabdomyosarcoma. So what to do with these two additional lesions, which look like LR5. And unfortunately, I don't have the answer. It's just, it's just interesting intellectual discussion. Um, you know, so is it, is it safe to call them LR5s, HCCs? Um, you know, should we biopsy them to confirm? Can they be METs? Um, and, uh, you know, th this is like, an odds game. Um, we had this conversation today with the, with, you know, the clinicians, and the bottom line is that, you know, you know, the likelihood ratio for R five category is fairly high. It's about seventeen, which means that you know, HCC is seventeen times more likely to to meet criteria for LR five than non HCC. Um, so still, you know, the you know the odds are these two lesions are. HCCs and the patient clearly has cirrhosis, so, you know, so she's at risk for it. And they don't look like this, this, this big rhabdomyosarcoma. That being said, you know, this rhabdomyosarcoma, you know, is rare, right? It's, um, so it's hard to judge. So like we're between two, two kind of rare scenarios. We either have a person who has a very rare cancer with concomitant, com, you know, common appearance of, to, of common tumor that she's at risk for, or she is, you know, she has a metastatic rhabdomyosarcoma with an atypical 
metastases. I'm not um, sure. I mean, to me, my, my, my question is, what is going to dictate her right. outcome? And it's the sarcoma. Right. I, I, I mean, you know, so like HCC, and it has a pseudocapsule. I mean, it has all the features. Yeah, the, it, it um, has, but you know, the, the, these, so the enhancing, like, so pathologically, right, the, the true capsule is very specific for HCC, but pseudocapsule is specific for a rapidly growing mass. So really the fact that this thing has enhancing capsules, not neither here nor there, theoretically, it could be like a rapidly, you know, growing mass and it, and it will, you know, they will make up pseudocapsule. So that's not, but but that that's basically the bottom line is you know are they gonna if, if these are HCCs will that change management and they're not sure so we may not find out for sure they may they may just not bother with 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 doing the biopsy for her uh, because it just won't matter yeah I mean that's what I'm thinking like I mean it's this is metastatic it's sarcoma yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean I don't I don't I, I I that's I presume will probably dictate her right I mean outcome. I mean, just for like my my personal, like, you know, very uh, skewed interest, I want them to biopsy because I want to know. Uh, but I, uh, I'm not sure they will, because I'm not sure. I, I don't think this is going to make a difference in patients' outcomes. <coughs> I know this is a abdominal <laughs> radiology conference, and. I promise this is relevant to abdomen. Okay, so I'm showing you this because a patient presented with kind of brain symptoms and had abnormal MR uh, findings cons uh, consistent with encephalitis. And uh, patient, they, they worked her up and the patient ended up having antibodies to NMDA, NMDA receptor. So what does that mean? Um, why, why is that relevant to us in abdomen? Any guesses from anybody? The, the mites. The, the, I'm sorry, can you say a little bit louder? Like some uh, NDA, NMDA, like some dermoid association, is it that? So the patient got Aren't a... they associated with like teratomas or something? Okay. Good. Yes. So um, we got a CT, abdomen and pelvis. And what are your thoughts? What do you see? Is there teratomas or no? Can someone say something? <laughs> yes, yes. So we've got a shy audience here. Um, okay, yes. Yeah, so we see bilateral. Uh, so these are fat containing lesions bilaterally uh, compatible with teratomas. Uh, so this is um, an MDA encephalitis from a teratoma. So here is a great radiographics article. Uh, it's one of cookie cookie jar cases from cookie jar. Uh, so anti NMDA receptor encephalitis. So dermoids, teratomas, they um, they can uh, create this kind of immune response. Uh, it triggers an immune system to make antibodies against NMDA receptors, um, and that attacks the receptors in the brain and causes encephalitis. And the patients get psychiatric, neurological, and autonomic symptoms. Um, so these are some examples from that uh, case. And ours um, also had imaging findings on MR. And then, you know, often this will lead to um, a CT to look for uh, dermoids, uh, which this patient had. Any questions? So in these I have a question for these yeah. patients. Should you go straight to a CT or would a simple pelvic ultrasound be enough? Um, I think CT is better. Okay. I mean, presumably ultrasound should be good enough, but CT is like diagnostic, then there's no question, right? So if, 
Mm. If the ultrasound is not clear or if the dermoid is small or we don't see it or the patient, let's say, for example, if the patient has a large habitus, it would make ultrasound difficult. I mean, CT is uh, will be diagnostic, irrespective. Got it. Thank you. Of course. Okay. That's the finding. I know this is this is chest. So anybody has any thoughts? Um, well, there's bilateral kind of varicoid bronchiectasis. Mm -hmm. uh, so in my mind, I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, my chest knowledge is, you know, a little bit remote, but um, his geocytosis, um, the, but I don't know why you would show that. Uh, <laughs> uh, the other thing is cystic fibrosis. Um Here's, this is like a, a while ago, similar finding, you can see it really hasn't changed. So you, you're on the right track in that it's a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an, it has a name. This is the name, munier Kahn syndrome. So this patient had a, has a standard diagnosis of this, which is, uh, you know, rare clinical radiologic condition characterized by marked tracheobronchial dilatation and recurrent low respiratory tract infections. So um, this wasn't, you know, this wasn't, uh, this is not the pa why the patient has like a history of TCC and just, this is a surveillance scan, but uh, you know, I've never, I vaguely remember seeing this name at some point in my life, but I've never seen this in real life. So I figured I'll share, even though <laughs> yes, it's not a, it's not a chest uh, conference, but still kind of cool. Okay, this is a patient with uh, renal transplant. Uh, this is, um, you know, one of the baseline uh, post-transplant uh, non-con CT abdomen that we got. Uh, and then patient had kind of, and this was the ultrasound. Um, and so you can see the renal ultrasound and there's Doppler flow. Uh, into the renal parenchyma. And then patient came in to the ED with um, kind of acute symptoms. And now this is what it looks like. Oh, and and um, let me actually show you the venous. And then I will show you the prior for comparison. So again, this is the prior. And then this is the current. So any any thoughts? So uh, on imaging, um, the prior imaging, you see the, the kidney is kind of in the left lower quadrant as we expect. Um, and here in uh, the, the, the kidney itself has rotated uh, more medially uh, and centrally right there. And the other, uh, there's free fluid and this is a venous phase. So in, on the venous phase, the parenchyma should be enhancing, right? But there's no enhancement of the kidney, transplant kidney at all. Uh, and if you, this, these are the vessels here, you see the normal vessels enhancing, but then the intrahyalar vessels are not enhancing. Um, and this was the renal ultrasound um, that confirmed you know, the finding uh, that we had suspected on CT. Any guesses? So this is a renal transplant torsion so the uh, renal transplant here completely torsed on itself. Uh, and then that led to uh, kind of the medialization of the, the transplant because it got torsed uh, and then complete absence of flow into the kidney. Uh, so the patient um, had surgery and the, the transplant could not be salvaged. Uh, and so they did a nephrectomy and removed it. 